I just created this Battle Royale first-person shooter game using an Unreal Engine plugin that I made that lets AI build games for you in Unreal Engine 5. And if you want to figure out how to do the exact same thing, watch this video. For this video, we're going to be utilizing the Low Poly Shooter Asset Pack, which if you want to also get that, you can support my channel by using the affiliate link down in the description. And if you want to pick up my Unreal Engine AI plugin and start making your own games in Unreal Engine 5, you can click the link down below. No coding experience is needed. You can be a complete beginner or you can be a seasoned developer. Either way, this video is going to help you and make sure you watch it all the way through and don't skip any steps if you wanna be able to make a game that looks like this. Let's get into it. So first, we are going to create a project using the low poly shooter pack, which currently only supports 5.6, but don't worry, that's fine. We're gonna create it anyways. Once we have our project created, we are gonna go into the project, we're gonna right click the U project file, and we're going to upgrade this baby to 5.7, because 5.7 or bust. Once the project has successfully been upgraded, we are gonna take our Revolt plugin, we're going to put it in the plugins folder, we are going to open up this project, and wow we there we go, we got a low poly shooter game. However, we want this project to be C++ because our AI works much better with C++ than Blueprint. I mean, it can work with Blueprint, but C++ right now is the way to go. And converting any Blueprint project to C++ is pretty easy. All you have to do is go to Tools and press Add C++ class. Once you do that, Unreal Engine just automatically does all of the work to convert this into a C++ project. All that's left for us to do is to restart the project, let it compile, and we now have a perfect starting point for our low poly shooter battle royale game. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to save this as a checkpoint inside of our IDE. I don't know if you guys are using Writer or Cursor or VS Code or whatever, but if you have Git integration, throw in a Git ignore file and then just commit this as your starting point. So that way, if you ever mess up, or in this case, if you want to test out a different AI, you can roll back to this version, this starting point, and start over from that checkpoint. Okay, so this project has a whole bunch of cool stuff. You've got NPCs that you can shoot at. You have a whole bunch of different weapons. You have a whole bunch of different environment assets to make maps with. This is a pretty cool asset pack. But one of the things that I want to show off is how you can use the Revolt plugin in order to very rapidly learn about asset packs like this and create new features. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to ask our AI if the Revolt interface is running. And if you have the plugin installed and if you go up to tools and you search for Revolt, you can see all of the Revolt server controls there. By default, the API interface that Revolt supplies should be running. So you should shouldn't even have to do anything. You don't have to use any of these start, stop, restart controls. It should just be running whenever you open up the project. We're going to test that out. We're going to ask the AI if it can see the API interface. We're going to drag in this readme file from the plugin so that way it has all of the directions on how to use the plugin and we're going to let it go. Okay, so it can see the Revolt 2.1 interface, which means that it's working. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, you can see the interface, go and do your thing. Give me a full passive research on every single asset from the blueprint to the code to all of the different art assets. Give me a full picture of everything that is in this asset pack and give me some directions on which features are included that I could use to make my battle royale game go. And as you can see here, it's used that interface and it has gotten a full snapshot of every single file in this project. It knows how all of the files work. It knows how all of the files are connected. It has a full picture of everything that is contained inside of this asset pack. And that only took a few seconds. Having to go through all of that stuff manually, opening up every single blueprint, opening up every single data set could take... Honestly, maybe even hours, but with the Revolt plugin, we can do it in seconds. Now that that's done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new map, and we're also going to create a C++ class that we can use as a starting point 
for our battle royale mode. What I think we're going to do is we're going to create a procedural level generator that's going to create a different level every single time that we play the game. And in addition to that, we're also going to be creating a battle royale game mode class, which is going to house the mechanisms for a battle royale game mode. Now, there might also be some other things that we're going to have to edit or create, and we're going to let the AI use its ability to research this asset pack and guide us on what we should change in order to make this game work the way that we want it to work. So let's create the map first. So we're going to go ahead and copy some of the lighting from the demo map, because why not? And after that's set up, what we're going to do is we're going to create a procedural map generation class. And this is what our AI is going to be utilizing in order to build a procedural map generation system. Now, our AI has already gathered all of the different names and all of the different types of assets in this project utilizing our Revolt plugin. So what we're going to do now is we're going to ask it to identify those assets that it thinks would be a great fit for our procedural map generator, and then we're going to have it create this actor that we can place inside of the map and press a generate button in order to create our map. We're going to make sure that this includes AI spawn points, player spawn points, as well as weapon spawn points so you can go around collecting weapons and have a classic battle royale experience. Now that we have our procedural map generator, which it has created for us, we're going to drag this into the level. There we go. And you can see all of the different controls that the AI has created for us in order to utilize this blueprint class that it has created for us. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this. Let's hope it works. Wow. And that actually looks pretty Good for a one shot Gemini 3 Pro has really created something substantial here. Obviously, the floor is not fantastic, but having all of these different assets randomly placed around, you got all of these buildings. This is a pretty cool starting point for a procedurally generated map. And the coolest thing here is that you can change the seed so we can regenerate it. And there's a different map. Here's another one. So the procedural generation seed is actually working, and we can even control the size of the map. Let's try that. Wow, and there is a significantly larger procedurally generated map. Let's see if it can even do different sizes for the length. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So you can even have like a corridor style map. Let's just make something absolutely humongous. And we're gonna have to increase the counts of all of these individual buildings, environments, because as you can see with the bigger maps, they get more spread out. So we're going to, I don't know, like twice as much, roughly. Hopefully that's enough. I mean, I just increased this to 50,000, so let's see. Oh, very sparse. Incredibly sparse. But still really cool kind of shows off the concept of what you can use for this and this is something that we just one-shotted with gemini 3.0 i know that we have kind of a time limit here so i'm just going to experiment really really quick but i am going to be working on this after this video and maybe creating an even more in-depth procedural landscape generator oh wow there we go yeah so we can up the counts of all of the different buildings and all of the different environment pieces. I mean, if you could combine this with a proper terrain generator, this could be a pretty solid map generator. But now is the most important part. We're going to give our game a playthrough. So I can already hear the AI shooting at each other on the map. Man, this is looking pretty fun. I mean, for eight minutes of work so far, this is pretty cool. And even the buildings are destructible. All right, this is a solid starting point. So now we have a proper first-person shooter game. But the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take this from just a generic first-person shooter game and start implementing some battle royale mechanics. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to be utilizing a debug system that we are going to create using our plugin and using our AI. And this is really important because if you really want to get the most out of utilizing the Revolt GPT plugin, 
skin that I created, as well as using any AI that you're using. You need to get familiar with creating systems that allow the AI to see what is happening in the game. So for instance, you can see this output log here, and this output log, you can interface with creating scripts that scan the in-game environment and dump data to this output log, which can be very, very useful when either yourself or your AI is developing scripts or developing mechanics. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear this log. And I have already created the C++ class called AI Debug System. And we are going to take this debug system and we are going to ask our AI, can you update this class to pull all information about any AI that are active in the game? And we're going to let that go and build all of the debug tools that we're going to need in order to understand what's happening in the game and then connect that to the battle royale mechanics that we're going to create next. And once we have this debug system, we can just drag this into our map. And when we play, you can now see that all of the AI have debug, which will help us diagnose if they're working. And more importantly, you can also see all of this information being pumped out into our log, which is going to help our AI make any future changes that it's going to need to make. So we are going to feed this data to the AI and we're going to ask it, utilizing all of this information, which is going to help it pinpoint the exact classes, the exact characters, the exact systems and functions that it needs to target. Using this, can you create a battle royale mechanic where when there is only one winning player remaining, it will restart the game. And once it has completed its work, all we have to do is take that class, drag it into our map, and we can test the game. Okay, as we can see in the top left hand corner, we can see the counter showing how many enemies are remaining. We're going to go ahead and we're going to play a full round and we'll see if the game properly restarts when we've won. I know the last guy is over here. There he is. Boom. And there you can see up in the top left hand corner, it says match over, restarting, no enemies remaining, and it just successfully restarted the match. So there we go. Within 10 minutes, we now have a full game loop for our Battle Royale game. The last thing we have to do now is remove this debug system, and we're going to package our game into an installable Windows executable. Okay. Utilizing the plugin, I was able to also ask the AI to completely prepare my game for distribution. And the way that you do that is you can have it edit all of the packaging files that are required in order to turn this into a fully built shippable game. You go to Platforms, Package Project, and click Package Project for Windows. And when that is done, you will have a fully compiled game that you can put on Steam, Itch, or anywhere else. Let's give this a play and let's see how well it works. Okay, here we go. Game appears to be working. All of the AI is working. All of the destructible environments appear to be working. Yeah, here we go. So we just created a Battle Royale game that we can now continuously modify, give to our friends, put on Steam, put on Itch. And this is even a fantastic framework for making multiplayer games. So you could make this a co-op game, you could make this a multiplayer game, you could make it PvP, PvE, and you can do this in 10 minutes utilizing AI with the Revolt GPT plugin. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you have appreciated this video, and I hope this has opened your eyes up to what is possible in 2025 with Unreal Engine and artificial intelligence. If you want to get the plugin, it is currently cheaper than Battlefield 6. So for less than the price of a first person shooter game that you don't even have the rights to, you can get a plugin that can let you vibe code your own 
tactical shooter game inside of Unreal Engine. And that really is the future of gaming, in my opinion. I think in the coming years, everyone, and I mean everyone, is going to be able to create their own tactical shooter games, their own Unreal Engine 5 games. And quite frankly, I think that's how it should be. Now, if you want to get the plugin, link is down in the description. However, I will also be adding the classes that I created for this project. So the procedural landscape generator, as well as the battle royale mode. I will be putting those C++ classes up for free to everyone who has purchased the plugin. And I will also be uploading this demo, this battle royale game mode that we created for free, no purchase required at all to Gumroad as well. So if you want to go get this and try it out for yourself, please do. And besides that, if you want to see more videos just like this one, showing you what is possible in the modern era when it comes to Unreal Engine 5 and artificial intelligence, make sure you subscribe, and I can't wait to see you guys again. All right, talk soon.